going to pick up where we left off this morning. Praise God, who is fighting your battles. Exodus 14, 13, and 14, the main text. We read a good portion of the 14th chapter today. And um, so we're just we're going to hop in and pull out the main text for the, our teaching. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. And the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Praise God. Amen. And uh, this was after they had murmured and complained about, you know, who was going to... Um, God brought them out in the desert to kill them and all that kind of stupid stuff. That's just dumb talk. That's dumb talk. So now if you weren't here, you got to go back and listen to this morning because it wouldn't make sense to, you know, try to back, cover, go back and cover everything. And... Um, we start, we've kind of finished up this morning talking about we do not fight in the flesh. 2 Corinthians 10, 4, 3 and 4, for though we, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Praise God. And so we find out from the Word of God that we're fighting a battle of spiritual uh, dimension, that our battles are fought in the realm of the spirit and not in the realm of the flesh. You're not going to win in the flesh. You can't, you can't go out and whip the devil with your, with your uppercut. Yeah. It just don't work that way. You can't get a nuclear bomb and take him out. It's a spiritual battle. Everybody say it's a spiritual battle. Hallelujah. Uh, Ze Zechariah chapter 4. Look over there. Zechariah chapter 4. That's back, you know, some people, your pages are stuck together. Hallelujah. How many pages are stuck together? My glory, my eyes are stuck together. I can't even find it. I use my PC study by all my computer stuff so much that, hallelujah, these guys get lost to me sometimes. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. He said, um, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Say, not by might, nor by power, or armies, as the margin says, um, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Not by armies, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. In other words, uh, the answer is not found in, in human ability or, or in the number of your armies. It's found in the Spirit of God. Amen? You know, um, uh, when, you're, when you're fighting the enemy, you may look small, but, the, but you're big. Y'all hear you going home. I said, you may look small, but you are big. And we got to learn that the Lord, you know, we, we don't fight in the flesh. We fight by the Spirit, praise God. We fight by the power of the Holy Ghost. We trust the greater one in us. Amen. We trust the greater one to take us over and to put us over the top. The greater one in us is our answer. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Not by armies and not by might. Not, no, that's not about human might. We do have Holy Ghost might. We have dunamis power. We have supernatural power and might, but not human might. You don't win through human might, human ability. We, it's all through supernatural power of God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, Timothy tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, that we're to fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and profess the good profession before many witnesses. Amen. So our fight is the fight of faith. We are to win. We, we win through the, through, through the fight of faith. Amen. It's, it's not, it's not going to be done through the flesh. Amen. It's not going to be done through ability. It's going to be done through the, the uh, supernatural power of God. Because we walk the walk and fight the fight of faith. Amen. Talk the talk, walk the walk, and fight the fight of what? Faith. Remember, Hebrews tells us that without faith it's impossible to please him. For they that come to him must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And uh, then you go on and read that 11th chapter of Hebrews. It talks about all the things we did. Through faith they did this, and through faith they did that, and through faith this, and through faith that. It's through faith. That the, the battles are won. It's through faith that the victory is gained. It's through faith that you're an overcomer. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So with the words victory becomes a companion word to faith. 
Victory is produced through faith. Yeah. Amen. It said victory is produced through faith. It's not produced through whining. I'm telling you, sometimes you just want to look at some Christians and say, you want a little cheese to go with that wine? <laughs> you know, I mean, they've got too much wine and not enough something else. <laughs> Hello, we want to we want to we want to live uh, our, our walks of faith, and you know we're not going to teach on faith because we've t we've talked about it so many times. But you know, you you got to learn to apply that faith and use that faith and win with that faith, and and use it to your advantage, use it to your good, use it so that you're a winner, that you're the head and not the tail above only and not beneath. Amen. Glory to God. So that you're you're like those in Hebrews chapter eleven. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You, you can say through faith, Bill did this. And through faith, Dick did that. And through faith, Jerry did this. And through faith, Sunshine did that. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I was hoping everybody would turn around. Look for Sunshine. She's here. Don't worry. Don't look. Glory to God. Through faith, through faith, through faith, through faith, through faith. The answer is through faith. Amen. And uh, what happens when you walk by faith? God gives us the victory. The victory comes through God our Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Romans 8, 37 says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. 1 John 5, 4. Um, right there. Hallelujah. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now thanks be unto God, which all, I like that, which always, always, didn't say sometime, didn't say part of the time, didn't say maybe so. He said always causes us to triumph, hallelujah, to in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Well, what, what's the savor of his knowledge? The savor of his knowledge is the victory that's produced in our lives. We're walking, talking victory. Uh, we're, we're victory going somewhere to happen. Okay, I got two grunts, an amen. Three, three snorts. Come on. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm going to get me the hokey pokey on CD. And I'm just going to start playing and make you get up and dance. Amen. You got to get, you got to get, we got to get some action going on with our faith. Amen. Praise God. Go with me over to 2 Kings, please. Chapter 6. Love this story. Hallelujah. And when I say story, I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking about it. It's just something that took up place in the Bible. It's, it's a biblical account. Okay? So 2 Kings chapter 6. And glory to God. Praise God. Oh, we'll start around um, verse 8. The king, then the king of Syria warred against Israel. And, and look, they've been fighting Israel. Syria's been fighting Israel. And Egypt's been fighting Israel. People fighting Israel for, for millennia. Yeah. It's not something that just happened last week and started last week. Hello. Then now the news media and the, and, and the, uh, the crazy lunatic want to kill Israel people make you think that it's just happened in the last 40 years or 50 years. They were doing this millennia ago. Thousands of years ago, they were. And then the king of Syria, <laughs> those places are still there. <laughs> Warred against Israel. And took counsel with the servants, saying, In such and such place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware lest thou pass not such a place, for there the, thither the Syrians are come down. And, when, and the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there not once uh, nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will you show me which of us is for the king of Israel? In other words, which one betrayed us? Who's the traitor? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And uh, he said, Go and spy where he is, and I may send him and fetch him. And, I, and it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and got past the city about. Now listen, he, he's figuring out this guy's going, how dumb people can be. If God was telling the prophet where Syrian, the Syrians were hiding so he could warn the king of Israel, do you think sending a bunch of covert uh, guys in at night is going to mess anything up? 
See, people, people who are carnal are just dumb. They don't get it. Hallelujah. And uh, they could pass the sea about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host could pass the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Now, and this, this is, Help! Okay, that's King Jimmy for help. We are in a pickle. <laughs> and he, that's the prophet, answered and said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than be with them. Servant. One, two. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I mean, actually, we got the three, he's already more. Mm -hmm. He goes around the whole thing, comes back, looks over at the prophet, and goes, One, two. Uh, you trying to tell me something I don't understand? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, this is what, this is what the prophet already seen. The mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. <laughs> Ooh. And when they came down to him, that's the, that's, that's the army of God. He said, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them in blindness according to the word of Elisha. I mean, they're sitting out there. They showed up. They're ready to take this guy out. They, I mean, they, they, they're going to stop the prophet from telling off on them. The devil gives them really bad information. Hello? Y'all here, you go home. And so the guy opens up his eyes up there, and they are surrounded by a host of God's chariots of fire. Glory to God. Then when they came down, he said, Lord, slain with blindness, and they smote that whole other army with blindness. Kind of hard to fight if you can't see. And night vision goggles won't go help in this case. Are you here? They were blinded. They were suddenly completely off their game because they couldn't see what they were doing. In other words, they were totally vulnerable. Hallelujah. And... Um, And 19, and Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I'll bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. <laughs> and when it came to pass, when they come into Samaria, the Lord, the Elijah said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, When he saw them, my father, shall I smite them? And, and sh uh, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he said, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Thy bow? Thy, uh, set the bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to the master. And he prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away. And so they went to their master. And so the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. Now, he could have taken them out, but he showed mercy. Now, in showing mercy, two, several things happen here. One is, they knew their goose was cooked. They're toast. I mean, they, they show up, they're going to do something, they're suddenly smitten with blindness. He leads them over to another place, Samaria, and then when their eyes are open, they're ready to take them out. Instead, he feeds them, and they go back, and they, won't, they don't ever bother them again. I said, they don't ever bother me again. They ran into something they didn't want to interested in messing with again. They knew. They knew that they had been shown and granted mercy on that day. That if they, that, that they were messing with something that's greater than them. And you have to understand, they that be with you are more than be with them. Praise God. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Ahabadinejad or Ahadami <laughs> says he's going, his goal, his goal is to annihilate the Jewish people, to annihilate the state of Israel. Dumb statement. Yeah. I said, really, really, really dumb statement. Because if he goes to messing with Israel, yeah. he's going to run into what the, 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 all the people ran into in the Six-Day War. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's more to be with Israel than be with them. 
Amen. And I'm, I'm kind of saddened that our, our current State Department and our current um, uh, presidency is not for Israel. Oh, yes, so they're, they're, they're one of our closest allies. Now, we only have one close ally in the Middle East. That's Israel. The others we're trying to keep control of. They're not allies. They'll stick us in the back the first chance they get. You can't trust them. They're you can spit them. Well, diplomacy. Diplomacy won't work with crazy people. Yeah. Diplomacy doesn't work with demon-possessed people. Diplomacy doesn't work with people who want to get a nuclear weapon and wipe out a whole nation. Diplomacy does not work in that case. I'm, I'm sorry. Diplomacy does not work in that case. Is that better, Brother Bill? Yeah. Yep. I need some more lights back there. I like to get to that front row, but now that he's... <laughs> Like, we need more lights back there so we can, I can get to my front row again. I like to get on that front row. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so here, here, listen, the God that spared Elisha is the same God we serve. And there is more that be for us than be with them. There's more that be with us that are arrayed against us. God is bigger and greater than what you're facing. Out of the Bible head, come on, church. Amen. Amen. God is greater. And so when, when, they, when he opened his eyes, he saw those armies. And I, I'm just going to tell you something. The battle of Armageddon is not going to be a pleasant battle for those who come against Israel. Y'all hear you going home. Now, then uh, Russia is trying to reestablish re itself, and it's hooking up with Iran, it's hooking up with Syria, it's hooking up with different nations, the Chinese. They're all trying to play political games in the world to gain ascendancy and pre preeminence in the world and destroy us. China's got trillions of dollars of our debt. And they, they wanna, if they could call it in, they could just totally destroy our, our economy. Don't think that's not their plan. Hello? We keep selling them debt, and we keep printing money. The one world government won't necessarily be about geographical borders as much as as much of it is financial borders. You got to understand the end times when we wrote when we see things in the Bible. So a lot of times people think they understand what it means and they don't have a clue. Hello, European Union's been around since nineteen the fifties, but I'm going to tell you it's it's going to it's going to collapse and end up with ten nations. At some point in time, it's going to it's going to fall apart to a certain degree, and it's it's an economic it's the econ, it's the economic powerhouse. How in the world is the, the euro still worth more than the dollar right now? There's, there there are forces behind all this, demonic forces. Hello, but I want to know you. I want you to know something. There's more to be with us than be with them. There's more to be with us than be with them. And we better stand on the side of Israel. And you, you, you get amazed at the Jews in this country who are for people who wanted to destroy Israel. Why? Because their eyes are blinded. They, destroy, they, they crucified their Redeemer. Yeah. I'm not anti-Jew. I'm just telling you. The blindness that's on their heart is so great. They, they crucified their Redeemer. You don't think they'll vote for somebody who would blow up Israel? Who, who wouldn't defend Israel? They're so blinded by these things. Hello, I'm about blinded by these lights right now, man. Brighter than the noonday sun. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. But God is for us. And we need to understand that when you're facing a battle, you're not by yourself and the enemy is not greater. He's not greater in number. He's not greater in power. He's not greater in ability. He's not greater at all. The Bible says that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Glory to God. The greater one indwells us. He's greater than their armies. He's greater than their finances. He's greater than their strategies. He's greater than their plans. He's greater than anything they've got going for them. Hallelujah. Because Jesus Christ conquered death hell and the grave glory to God amen he said I am the alpha the omega the beginning and the end the first and the last he who was dead and is alive and am alive forevermore and I have the keys of death and hell glory to God hallelujah that means Satan don't even have the keys to his own house anymore <laughs> glory to God Hallelujah. What do you mean? He can't keep anybody from leaving his kingdom that wants to be born again. 
Hallelujah. He can't stop them. Jesus has got the keys. He can open the door to anybody that wants to come out. Somebody say Shanda. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 1.30, the Lord your God which goeth before you, he shall fight for you according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Deuteronomy 3.22, ye shall not fear them, for the Lord your God, he shall fight for you. Deuteronomy 21-4, through 4, when thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots and a people, more than thou be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be that when you come nigh unto the battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people. And he shall say, Here, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not, do, and do not tremble neither ye be terrified because of them for the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you glory to God can somebody say amen hallelujah go to the second uh, uh, book of Chronicles the 20th chapter another one of my favorite Bible stories hallelujah hallelujah glory to God hallelujah And it came to pass, verse 1, also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, with them that besides the Amorites, Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat the battle. And then there some, come some, then came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude from beyond the sea on this side, Syria, and behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is Engidi. Praise God. Die. In the, in Gida. In Gida. Oh, wow. And Jehoshaphat feared, and, listen, and set himself to seek the Lord. I'm telling you what, when fear grips your heart, go seek the Lord. Amen. I'm telling you, you get into the presence of God, and he'll, he'll dispel fear. He'll dispel, he'll, he'll despair anxiety. He'll dispel anything that's not of faith, praise God. You'll get into his presence. Amen. And Jehoshaphat feared and uh, set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed the fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask of the Lord, even out of the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehosh Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat stood in the midst of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art thou not? Not God in heaven. I tell you, sometimes when you're praying and confessing before the Lord, you're just stirring yourself up in remembrance of who He is. Yes, God knows who He is. Yes, amen. It's just good for us to say it and acknowledge it. Amen. 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 God, it doesn't give God any kind of special woof for you to say you're the God of our, of our fathers. But it sure stirs us up. It puts us in remembrance of who He is. Amen. Amen. I mean, you don't have, God's not sitting on the throne going, that's right, that's right, that's right. Preach it now, come on. Yeah, you got it, uh-huh. It's pulling the sin of all. Yeah, hallelujah, all right. <clears throat> don't y'all love Cindy Duvall? <laughs> hallelujah. All right, uh, and they said, O Lord, o, o Lord God of our fathers, art thou not God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? All they're doing is really telling themselves who God is. Amen. Art thou not our God who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? Now, let me tell you something. You've got to understand terminology. In, in biblical terminology, when, when, he, when Abraham is referred to as the friend of God, he's not talking about God's buddy. It is a, it is a, uh, a Eastern term, or we could say a Hebraism, but an Eastern term to, in reference to friendship in this way meant blood covenant partner. That's, how, that's, what the, that's what that phraseology implied and meant. So when he said, Abraham, thy friend forever, he said, Abraham, you're a blood covenant partner. You're in a blood covenant, Abraham. You're in a covenant with Abraham. Oh, praise God. I said, oh, praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can you say amen to that? Amen. Hallelujah. Abraham, thy friend forever. Amen. Glory to God. Now I got to find where I was here. Yeah. Verse 7 in the, and verse 8. And they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name saying if when evil cometh upon us as a sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine we stand before this house and in thy presence for thy name is in this house and cry unto thee in our affliction thou wilt hear and help. 
And now, behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say how they reward us to cast us out of thy possession. I'm going to tell you something. When you get a revelation that it belongs to God, it's going to change things. Because when it belongs to God, God will take care of it. Hallelujah. I said God will do things you can't do because it belongs to him. I love the head shakes, but how about that little noise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to lay hands on you and make you Pentecostal. <laughs> Hallelujah. Black Pentecostal at that. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Glory. But look here. They said, look, you wouldn't let us kill them, and now they come back. Look, they're trying to stole off your land. Amen. How they come to cast us out of possession which thou givest us to inherit. O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against Listen, you understand this. You're going to be in places. You're going to get in places. See, some people think it's a negative confession to say, I don't have the might to do this. No, it's understanding where the weapons are and where the power is and what you do and what you don't have. You don't have the physical ability to win, but you have the spiritual ability to win. Amen? Amen? We, we can't defeat this army. In the natural, we're outnumbered. In the natural, my bank account's outnumbered. The dollars coming in are being defeated by the dollars going out. Amen? Well, I have no money. I can't work enough hours to get enough money to make up the difference. Okay? But that's not the end of the story. I said, that's not the end of the story. But listen where they were. We have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do. But our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives. I guess they thought they brought the kids out. It would really put it, you know, <laughs> you made the Lord feel sympathy for them. Here, Lord, look at the, look at the kid. I can't do anything about it. I mean, the kid, the kid, hey. I love it. Ooh, glory. I love it. When you come to the end of everything and God begins to speak. When you've tried to figure it, when you tried to finagle it, when you tried to make it, when you tried to take it, when you tried and you tried and you tried and you just say, Lord, I have no might against it. I don't even know what to do. But my eyes are on you. I'm looking to you. <laughs> and then upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Badaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Madaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you, there's nothing like a word from heaven in the midst of trouble. There's nothing like a word out of the breath of the mouth of God when everything is arrayed against you and your mind is squirreling out and your brain is trying to go fry on you. And I mean, you're just about, you just probably can't hardly take it anymore. But then the Spirit of God comes in, hallelujah, and a word from heaven is spoken, glory to God. And that word is the word of life. That word is the word of deliverance. That word is the word of restoration. Restoration, hallelujah, in the midst of calamity and trouble and the enemy being encamped round about you, the word of the Lord comes. And he said, hearken, ye all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. I'm telling you right now, it didn't matter what your state was when the word came. It was for you, glory to God, from the greatest to the least. <laughs> First thing, the Lord thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude. Stop. He said, first thing is, don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Don't get out of fear. Get out of the, how many have had pressure, so much pressure, you couldn't even get your thoughts to work right? Yeah. That's being dismayed. 
There's so much pressure. There's so much what ifs. There's so much how in the world. There's so many what am I going to do is going on. You become dismayed. Anybody ever been there? Fear not. Before he told them why not to fear, he just said, fear not. Nor be dismayed. Hallelujah. By reason of this great multitude, listen to this. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Oh, hallelujah. I said, oh, how they looked to their God and said, we don't know what to do. Hallelujah. We're, we're just in a pickle. We're just going to look at you. And he said, don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. It's not your battle anyway. It's mine. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up to the cliff of Ziz. And ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. And ye shall, listen, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. Doesn't that sound like the children of Israel at the Red Sea? Yeah. Same statement. Ye shall see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them. The Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head and his face to the ground. All of Judah and the inhabitants of Israel fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose up in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear ye, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Wow. Believe in the Lord and believe his prophets. Amen. What's that? That word of the Lord came. Oh, that's just somebody telling me, nah, I don't even believe that man. That's why I'm going to tell you something. You're going to go be toast. I said, you're going to be toast. Double-sided toast. Uh, toast, not, not oven, broiled on one side, you know, with the broiler. I'm talking about oven, but toasting on both sides. You don't believe his prophets. I know the, I know the, the Lord. When the word of the Lord comes, you better jump on it. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness. And as they went out before the army to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Now, can you imagine going into battle? And instead of having all the tanks and the bombs, you know, the Navy, you know, a lot of times we, we attacked, especially in World War II, we had the big old battleships with the 20 and 22-inch guns and all that stuff. I think the, the Carolina had either 18 or 20-inch cannons. I mean, they were big. And then that, the, 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 uh, the Yamato and the, um, the other one that was in the same class had 22-inch guns. They could send 2,000-pound uh, projectiles 20 miles. I mean, they, they, you're talking about launching something that had some serious power to it. Well, we would bombard beaches for hours with, 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 the, um, with the shells, and then the guys would go in. They didn't go in with the, with, uh, the choir. The army marching band didn't come off the boat going to, you know, the guy with the, you know, his little big thing there. Anyway, y'all you know, seen it before, haven't you? The army marching band didn't land on the beach like that. You know, play, playing some military song, the battle hymn of the Republic or whatever. They came out shooting. But Jehoshaphat appointed singers. Why? Because the Lord said, you know, I'm not going to have to fight in this battle. It's my battle. Yeah. Hallelujah. So he appointed singers who went before the armies. Hallelujah. Singing, um, praise ye the Lord. For his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. And they were came down against Judah. They were smitten. And the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Seir utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy one another. 
And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude and saw that there were dead bodies falling to the earth and none escaped. <laughs> and when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them abundance, both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off of themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering the spoil. It was so much. Now, I don't understand the concept they had back then, but armies traveled with all their, their possessions. They carried the gold. We put it in the vault. They prayed around with it. It's kind of like a winner-take-all thing. Really. And so, winner took all. You had three armies that raised themselves against Israel. God set ambush against them. When they were going out, they are going out, Praise ye the Lord. His mercy endureth forever and ever. Praise ye the Lord. Woo! His mercy endureth forever and ever. Praise ye the Lord. His mercy endureth forever and ever. Hallelujah. I don't know how to end that, but anyway, yes, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. They started singing that. And all the other guys start killing each other. Hello? Who knows? Maybe some gnat fell on somebody. He slapped and they started killing each other. Kind of like the, the, the orc and stuff in Lord of the Rings. They started to kill each other all the time. You know? Meat's back on the menu! And they, they're eating each other. Hallelujah. Well, <laughs> you're like, what's Lord of the Rings? Oh, anyway, forget it. Hallelujah. Good stuff. Hallelujah. They were in such disarray. They killed each other. Israel shows up. All they're doing, they come walking in like the choir boys. Praise ye the Lord. I mean, I don't know, you know. And they, they, there's so much gold and jewelry and precious and, 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 and spoil. It takes them three days to haul it all off. Now, wait a second. Three and a half days earlier, they were surrounded and crying out for their life. Yeah. Three days later, they so rich it takes them three days to haul it around. Tell what am I saying? When you put God, when you put your trust in God, you've reached the end of your roof and you look to God and you set your eyes on Him and you call on Him. I'm telling you, His deliverance can be so powerful and so great that where you were up, uh, where you were underneath everything, a moment, just a moment before, you're on top and you're on top, set good. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I mean, somebody, somebody could be watching our program right now and write us a check and send us a check and take care of everything the church has a need of and all the, any debt we have and all the stuff, anything where we are, and catch it up. We're, 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 we've lost a couple of families this year. One moved and one left. And, uh, you know, it set the church back. But you know what? God has people who not bowed their knee and who will listen to him. Amen. And he can speak to them and say, send Faith to Victor Church a check of this amount right now, and they'll do it. He's talking to you. That's him. <laughs> if you're watching this and he told you that, then you go ahead and do it. Amen. 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 And, and just one, one check could completely turn everything to a whole different perspective. Amen. Somebody write a $100,000 check, we'd be sitting around in the black and not in the red with absolutely no bills. One, one check. There's people who write $100,000 checks. I want you to know that. Yeah. There are people write $200,000 checks, half million dollar checks. hundred people could write a thousand dollar checks. Same thing. I mean, if that can happen just like that, God can get you out of your mess quicker than you got, a whole lot quicker than you got in it. Amen. Amen. He can turn it around overnight. Amen. Israel, three days and three and a half days after. They were whining and complaining about they didn't know what to do. They finally just said, Lord, they got desperate. Lord, we put our eyes on you. God so delivered them and God so brought them out. There was so much. They, all the enemies were dead. Yeah. It's not like you went and stole the money. Now you got to watch out for the guy getting you back. They're all dead. There's nobody to come after you. There's nobody going to come try to take it back because they're all dead. And you spend three days hauling off the spoil. That'd make you sing, won't it? Amen. How'd you like to have to take three days to fill up your bank account? Ah. Took three days to haul all the stuff off to get it to your bank. Mm. How make you get happy about that? Yeah. Yeah. Joe, could you get happy about that? Exceedingly happy. <laughs> I just want to know if you'll get happy about that. Yeah. Amen. 
Anybody else get happy about that? Amen. Oh, yeah. I mean, one minute they're talking about foreclosure. The next minute you got so much you can't even, the bank can't even, you can't even get in the bank. And one day you got to take three days to get down there to get it in. Mm. Well, you're just talking foolish, Pastor. I'm talking Bible. That's right. We've got to start. We've got to have a revelation. We've got to have an expectation that God's going to do things for us like he, just like he did here. Because he's the same God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I just like go open up emails and look for things to come in from the email or whatever. Just, I mean, just come. This money cometh. Amen. Hallelujah. People send money in. Because all it takes is one person obeying God to, to turn something completely around. To where it's, it's, there's absolutely nothing, nothing in your way. It's all taken care of. It can work for the church. It can work for you individually. It can work for us corporately. If we'll just praise ye the Lord, His mercy endureth forever and ever. Praise ye the Lord. His mercy endureth forever and ever. Praise ye the Lord. His mercy endureth forever and ever. How does it, that Don Francisco in that? Mercy will never end. Uh. Now, Jehoshaphat was king of Jerusalem a long, long time ago <laughs> when everybody worshiped the Lord from the high on down to the low. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Don Francisco. Hallelujah. Yeah, good stuff. Hallelujah. Amen. They sent out the singers because God said, you don't have to fight. I'm taking care of this one. We need to come back to the place where we can go to God, put our trust in Him, and say, we, we, We've done everything we never do. We're looking at you. Faith and Victory Church, we're looking at you, Lord. We're looking at you to bring us out. You're looking at you to sustain us. You're looking at, we're looking at you to supply. Hallelujah. There's, not, there's nothing we can do to make, to, to make any difference. Amen. In the natural, in our ability, well, you sure can't help us. You sure can't deliver us. You sure can bring us out. Hallelujah. And we just say, praise you, the Lord, for his mercy endures forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I said amen. amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, I started to say something, but the Lord checked me. I got... I just declare over individuals, you don't have a business, you don't have what would be a, a seemingly um, easy way for income stream to take place by God just increasing business. You're, just, you're working. You're, you're, you're a set salary or um, a hourly paid employee, waged employee. But God, but God... But God, but God, oh, can you just, <laughs> I can't figure out a way, any way to get more money, but God, I can't, I just can't figure out how, how I can get more money in the house, but God, well, will deliver you, and God will bless you, and God will increase you. Keep your trust in him. I said it this morning. I'll say it again. Do not put your confidence in who wins the election as to bring, setting your, fixing your finances. There are so many things in motion right now. It would take, it's going to take a lot of work to fix it. Just changing something overnight is not going to fix it overnight. Now, I'll be honest with you. If Romney wins... On January 20th, when he swore in, they're not, companies are going to not want to hire 23 million people the next day. It takes time for business to ramp up, for investment to come in, to start investing money, to start creating things, to start getting uh, so jobs are created. It's, it's a cycle. It doesn't happen on the next day. You better be putting your trust in God. That God will deliver you and God will bring you out and God will cause good things to happen. Amen? Now, I believe, I believe we're going to see a turnaround in the economy. I believe good things are going to happen. But I'm telling you, you, you can't just put your faith that, you know, oh, we're going to vote this election, we're going to get the right person in, and boom, hallelujah, it's all going to be over. You're looking the wrong place. You better be looking to God. 
I said, you better be looking to God. Yeah, I believe we should be praying. I believe we should be voting the right way. But, you know, the, setting certain conditions is, is, allows things to happen in, in, in greater ways where God can minister to everybody. God wants to bless. He wants to reign on the just and the unjust. That's what the Bible says. He calls it the reign on the just and the unjust. He wants, he wants people in America blessed just because he's blessing the church. Amen. Praise God. Anybody here? Go home. Who's here? Hmm. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Barak. Uh, yeah, Berak. B- uh, for there blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the place was, uh, the valley was called the valley of Berakcha. There we go. Unto this day. And they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies. And they came to Jerusalem with psalteries and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. So the reign of the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet for the Lord gave him rest round about. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm telling you, he got, I mean, the news got back what had happened, and they didn't mess with him anymore. Amen. We need to get to the place where the devil gets, the, gets news of what happened, and he don't mess with us. He backs off. Amen. Praise God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. We're going we're gonna to trust God, aren't we? Amen. We're going to put our confidence in God, aren't we? We're going to put our trust and faith in Him. Amen? Praise God. Father, bless the people tonight. As we've, uh, we've shared this message on who's fighting our battles. Put our trust in the Lord. Put our trust in God. And we trust Him now. In Jesus' name, amen. We want all of you watching by internet to know that God's on your side. God will fight your battles. He will bring you out. He'll just demonstrate with a strong arm His power to deliver. In Jesus' name. We'd love to hear from you. And so you can email us off of our website, www.fbc.org. Uh, you can also give online, connect with us, and partner with us in, in giving. You can, uh, and you can listen to anything we've got for free and listen to it or watch it. We just enjoy having you with us. God bless you. And until next time, remember that this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith.